Uh, before I start my presentation, I would kind of want to get a feeling or a feel in the room for how many people are still on LifeRay 6X. So could you guys, wow, okay. <laughs> how many of you guys are actually on DXP? Okay, so this presentation is going to be more geared towards the people on 6. There's some valuable lessons that will be taught here uh, if you're on DXP as well. Um, but primarily, this is more of the challenges because obviously moving from 6 to DXP or 7, um, we have the new architecture change with OSGI and all that stuff. So this is more geared towards that. So hopefully you guys still get value out of it, but just a little warning uh, or just a little precursor. So uh, to give, my, give an introduction, my name is uh, Eric Chi. I'm a LifeRay Global Services Consultant. Um, I don't have a Twitter, but I have a GitHub and LinkedIn that you guys can uh, click on because these slides are being distributed out, if I'm not mistaken, to you guys. Um, so yeah, you guys don't have to take pictures. I've been seeing a lot of you guys taking pictures of the slides. All of these slides will be provided um, by our lovely uh, event staff. Okay? Okay. So. The first question is, why do we want to upgrade? There's a lot of different things, and obviously marketing wants to push down all of our new features down your guys' throats, right? So obviously, new features. Uh, if you guys were in this room before, we had the content forums and all that stuff. We have uh, artificial intelligence coming out and much more and more stuff that I can't think of right now. But anyways, new features is one of them. Uh, the next one is life rate official support. So if you're on... For instance, 6.1, end of life has already ended. So you guys don't have support from our support team anymore. So if you guys want to report bugs or talk to support because you have some type of issues, then being on a newer version of LifeRay allows you to extend that lifetime, right? So uh, I don't know the exact dates, but you can find all that information uh, on our website in terms of end of life uh, dates. So longer support life, just uh, as I mentioned. And the next one is better user experience. Uh, so when I started LifeRay, I started doing development on 6.1 and 6.2, and the user experience, in my opinion, was pretty bad. Um, I think DXP did a lot of good things to make it better for the user and better for the developer as well. Uh, and then the last, last but not least, uh, because your manager is telling you to upgrade and you can't really say no to them, right? So they want a new version of LifeRay because our sales team said, oh, we have all these cool features and we want to incorporate them into our product. Well, management is now telling you guys, the developers, to upgrade. And you can't say no to them because then you're out of a job. OK. So in my opinion, I think upgrading comes down to five key features or five aspects. The first one is infrastructure because LifeRay DXP or LifeRay 7X uses newer technology, so we use uh, Java 8 at minimum, uh, as opposed to Java 7, which is on 6, and all these other things. So like we used higher versions of Elasticsearch, uh, MySQL, database, all that stuff. You want to keep in mind of the infrastructure, right? So next thing is the, de the development tools. We no longer use plugins SDK. We use something called LifeRay Workspace, which most, most of you should be um, I guess aware of. If not, I'm gonna quickly go over through. I'm gonna quickly go over all of these bullet points um, on kind of a deeper level, but not too deep of a level because we don't have enough time. Uh, so we have new development tools for LifeRay DXP. Uh, we have new features. So let's say you made a customization to, I don't know, make workflow certain a certain way, right? Um, so in LifeRay DXP, we have better workflow, we have better web content management, we have better XYZ. Uh, let's say business sees that you guys have, or we have a new feature that covers an existing customization. That's one uh, thing that we need to take into consideration, right? We can kind of ax out your prior customization in favor of uh, LifeRay out of the box solution because we can also use that with LifeRay support just in case there are any bugs or uh, questions that you guys may have. And then this one is bolded because this is probably the heaviest or the most time consuming part of an upgrade is the customization analysis. Basically, all the custom code that you wrote, all the hooks, all the plugin EXTs, all of that stuff needs to be taken into consideration when you upgrade. 
Um, the more stuff you have, obviously, the more time and more money the upgrade is going to cost, unfortunately. Um, so this one, I like to focus on more, typically, when I do a type of, or when I do an upgrade. Uh, and we're going to be focusing on this part uh, primarily in this, in this talk. And the last one, if it's, I'll just use this. Uh-oh, what happened? Database, there you go. So the last part is the database. So you obviously need to upgrade a database, and Liferay has done a good job with providing a database upgrade tool. So how it works is on a very high level, it upgrades your existing version of Liferay to the next incremental step. So you need to go from 6, let's say you're on 6.2, you need to go 6.2, 7, 0, 7, 1, and 7, 2. So it needs to do incremental steps, and our database tool does a good job with handling that. OK, so infrastructure is the first bullet point of uh, this presentation. So my, I guess, advice to you guys is to decide your infrastructure early, because typically you guys have a middleware team or you guys have some type of other different team that handles your infrastructure part, right? So get those teams together early and show them this diagram. This is our official Liferay um, mat support matrix or compatibility matrix. And you guys can take a picture of this if you want or if you guys have already seen this. But basically, these are all the different versions that Liferay supports for whatever version that you want to upgrade to. In this case, we have 7.2 that's displayed up here. So to me, I don't really care what you use. You can use uh, MySQL 5.7 with CentOS and, I don't know, Oracle JDK 8. I don't really care. As long as it's up here, then Liferay officially supports it, and if there are any issues, you can go contact Liferay support um, for further questions. But this should basically work with your new implementation with Liferay. So uh, my advice to you guys is to decide these things early. Talk to your middleware team. Talk to your infrastructure team, whatever team it may be. Maybe you guys are the ones managing it. Get together with your team and decide what stack you're going to use, because it's very important. Okay. Infrastructure, I think, is pretty simple. You just more or less use the same versions, right? Um, the development tools. So if you're coming from 6, there's a lot more development tools that uh, are present within the 7.0 or the DXP environment. If you guys are already on 7, then this may be kind of a review for you guys. Um, but we're just going to quickly go over some of the tools that will help you develop for Liferay DXP. So. The first one is Liferay Workspace. So Liferay Workspace does a good job with aggregating all of your different modules and all of that stuff into one place. It's similar to Liferay Plugins SDK if you guys come from uh, Divert 6, uh, 6X, right? Um, so Liferay Workspace uh, holds your themes, your custom code, uh, your build scripts, all of that stuff will be existing within the Liferay Workspace. So uh, you should be leveraging that. The next one is Blade CLI. So Blade CLI is a tool that is used for creating more or less templates for DXP um, portlets. So let's say you want to create an MVC portlet. Well, Blade CLI will create that template for you, create the bnd.bnd, build.gradle, all of that stuff. It will be uh, very easy for you so you don't have to hand make it. The next one is we want to push LDS or IntelliJ, so Liferay Developer Studios, and now we officially support IntelliJ, so we have a Liferay plugin for IntelliJ if you guys decide to use that. But Liferay Developer Studio uh, is still supported by our team um, that actively develops on it, and they come out with new tools like the upgrade tool and all that stuff in there. And next one is the theme generator. I won't go too in detail for the theme generator, uh, because there's a lot of documentation on it. Basically, you use uh, Gulp to do, like, build a, a template similar to Blade CLI. It generates a theme for you, and then you can do all of your front end magic there. So, <laughs> for those of you who are on six, this may be new to you. For those of you that are on seven or DXP already, um, you may have already seen this, but this is the Liferay workspace. So, basically, this is the, the structure, and just to Make sure that you guys have all this information. All of the links that I'm talking about, or all of the, the links and notes, are going to be in the presentation. So you guys can just go to that, and it'll give you a more detailed breakdown of what is the configs folder, or what is the modules folder, or what is the wars folder, right? So on a high level, this is basically what uh, the Liferay workspace does. You would check this into your source, uh, your version control. So whether you use GitHub, Bitbucket, whatever, you would 
put this into that, and then you can do automated deployments uh, using this as the root. So this is the library home. So <laughs> Blade CLI, I'm going to go quickly go through this because uh, I want to make more time for the customization part. But basically, Blade CLI is more or less a command line interface that helps us do library development. They have built in um, templates for modules that we want to make. They, you can start the library container or the OSGI. You can start library from Blade CLI. You can use Google Shell through Blade CLI. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. And basically, all of our tools use that underneath the hood. So uh, if, we use, if you guys use Liferay Developer Studio or Liferay, uh, Liferay's plugin with IntelliJ, you guys will be using Blade CLI underneath the hood. Um, so just to give you a quick little outline, if you do, um, oh, it's not cut off. It's cut off on my screen right here. Um, but basically, this is just a template view of all, uh, this is just a quick view of all the templates that you have available that uh, are available in Liferay. Um, so like I said, this is very high level. We're going to go more in detail uh, and give you guys some tips on how to upgrade your individual's customized modules. Um, but this is just a list of things that you can do within Liferay DXP via Blade CLI. OK, so this is a really long part. I regret putting animations on all of these bullet points, so we're just going to quickly go through all of them. But basically, I just compared the difference between LDS and IntelliJ. I personally use IntelliJ, but they both do the same thing, right? Um, it's a tool at the end of the day. Use whichever one you're more comfortable with. If you guys have been using Liferay Developer Studio since 6.2 or since the inception of your career in Liferay, um, just use Liferay Developer Studio. If you want to, you can use IntelliJ, but both um, IDs are supported. OK? Oh, yes. And we can sync our projects with Gradle. And Theme Generator, like I said, it's just a command line tool that generates Liferay themes. Um, it's very easy to use. There's actually a lot of documentation, surprisingly, on it, on dev.liferay or uh, help.liferay if you guys are a, a subscription uh, member. And quiz, quick and easy installation through NPM. So it uses uh, NPM to install it. It's just a node module. And then that's basically it. So the next bullet point that we're going to go over again is the feature analysis. So basically, my tip to you guys is don't reinvent the wheel. If Liferay has come out with something newer, and you guys have made a customization in a prior version, uh, don't, yeah, just, you want to use Liferay out of the box stuff when able because it's supported by Liferay and it's, yeah, it's just less headache for the developers. Okay? So look at all the new features, and like I said, there's a lot of versions coming out every year. Uh, so our feature list gets more, like, more and more complicated as time goes on. But, um, yeah, just go through the feature list, see if uh, your customization, for instance, uh, had a client that uh, did something with workflow in 6.2, but when we decided to upgrade, it completely scrapped that um, portlet or that hook because our Liferay uh, DXP workflow engine supported whatever they did before. Okay, so compare them to old customizations. Get rid of old customizations in favor of Liferay out of the box because it's just better. OK, so this is the part that I want to spend most of my time on because this is basically the pain points of upgrading, right? It's easy to upgrade the infrastructure. It's easy to look at the feature list. It's easy to go on our documentation to look at, oh, these are the tools available for you when you need to upgrade or whenever you need to do development on, right? But the hard part is no one is going to hold your hand or tell you how to upgrade your code. That's usually the hardest part of an upgrade, right? Um, because you guys have all a bunch of different types of things you guys maybe made. REST APIs, you use Spring, you use plugins SDK. There's a lot of different types of portlets and hooks coming in from 6.2 going into DXP. So my advice to you is to take your time and don't stress about it. So I know a lot of people are not too happy with OSGI. And at first, when I started doing development, I didn't like OSGI either. But over time, I think OSGI is a wonderful tool to, or it's good to learn. Because if Liferay continues using OSGI, which we plan on to, um, it's worth the investment to rewrite some of your custom portlets in OSGI so that you learn how to use OSGI. You know how the OSGI container works. You know how to do dependency injection. All of those things, you want to be more microservice-y versus having one giant monolith and deploying all these wars everywhere, right? So, 
take your time, invest in rewriting some of your custom portal lists to OSGI. It allows you to also refactor some of your code. Maybe there's legacy code within your repository, and you want to get rid of it, but you just haven't had time or you haven't been able to, right? Um, so being able to rewrite some of your custom portal lists to be OSGI modules is a good step. And it's good for you because you'll learn. If you don't want to do that, which a lot of my clients and customers do, um, we have something called the web generator. And basically, this is a lift and shift approach. So if you have something, let's say, a hook for your login portlet, right? And you don't want to rewrite that, and you want to put it into your new seven uh, instance. Uh, we have something called a web generator. And basically what it does, it takes an existing Liferay 6.2 WAR architecture and converts it so that the OSGI container can recognize what it is and can be deployed onto it, and then it'll work as if it was just a single module within the OSGI container. So that is one option as well. My suggestion is to obviously rewrite it, because if you use your web generator to just lift and shift all of your code and just dump it into your new instance, that might save time and money at first, but later down the line, is this going to get more and more difficult to upgrade and maintain it? Uh, so typically, you want to use OSGI when you, when you can, because it allows you to learn a new technology. And also, it will allow you to refactor a lot of the code that may or may not um, yeah, may or may not want to exist in the code base anymore. So <clears throat> some people think it's a good idea to copy straight from source and to deploy it, which is a horrible idea. And I highly, highly, I'm against that. <laughs> so don't copy straight from source and then throw it and then call it your own hook, right? So you want to use OSGI extension points where you can to rewrite your hooks for DXP. I've seen people time and time just copy our RSS API straight out of core and then just drop it in as their hook and they call it their own and then they comment out some code and then they put maybe something and they call it theirs, right? Uh, you don't want to do that. You want to properly extend it so that uh, maintaining your code is much better because if you don't do that, you're going to be in a world of hurt uh, later down the line. It's just a pain to maintain it. Um, support is not going to help you, and uh, when you upgrade it, it's just probably going to cost a lot more money for your product owner. And then, yeah, that's my last point. So delete all the code that was copied and pasted from Liferay source and extend them the correct way. So obviously, there's plugin EXTs, and that should be used as a final and last resort of any type of extension. So you do not want to use that way of developing. Li Liferay DXP did a good job of making components and allowing you to extend a lot of different, um, a lot of different interfaces within Liferay via uh, OSGI extension points. So be sure to do that. So this is a really cool, so target platform. I think it's a really cool to manage your versions of your dependencies. And a good friend of mine taught me this, who is Dave Nebinger. You guys may or may not know who he is, but he's kind of famous and a big deal. Um, but basically, target platform is a good way for you to manage your dependencies. So sometimes when you are using Liferay, you don't know what version to use, right, of portal kernel whatever, right? Uh, I think I have a bullet point somewhere here. So there you go. So you don't need to worry about if version 2.40 of Liferay kernel matches the one that you're working against, right? So you want to use something called target platform, and this is supported within a DXP. Uh, basically, on a high level, what it does, it grabs whatever version that you specify of your Liferay instance, and it builds all of your dependencies using that specific version. Okay? And to give you kind of an overview, this is how you do it. This is inside the uh, setting uh, gradle.properties file within your Liferay workspace. So basically, there's two lines that you need to uncomment. The first one is Liferay workspace target platform version. And then this one takes in a comma delimited version of Liferay with the fix pack at the very end. And then there's different syntaxes <coughs> for each one. You can kind of, kind of find them online, but this is more or less how you do it, right? And then you also want to specify the target platform uh, index sources. This basically allows you to use the target platform uh, functionality. And like I said, what it does, it turns that build.gradle property at the very top into something like on the bottom. So basically, you don't need to specify all the different versions of the dependencies you're using. And obviously, this is speaking in perspective of Liferay DXP. So you've already 
decided that you're going to upgrade, and then you're going to use um, Liferate Workspace to do all of your deployments and build all your modules, right? Uh, in each one, you're going to need a build doc Gradle. So it's no, mo no longer an uh, Ant script. It's, we use Gradle, or Maven is also supported. Um, so this is a good way, because sometimes I feel like a lot of developers, uh, when they first upgrade, they get kind of intimidated by all the different versions. And like portal, for instance, portal com.lifefray.portal kernel 219. I think a new version comes out like every other week. So it's hard to keep up with which one exactly you want to use. And depending on which one you use, it can make or break your uh, application, right? So if you're using Liferay 7.1, Fixed Pack 12, it's going to pull in a specific version. And to check that specific version, you would do something like this. So GW just means Gradle wrapper. I have an alias that wraps that. Um, but you'd basically be running the Gradle uh, command, right? So Gradle wrapper dependency management, and then you grep the specific package name that you want to see, what version you're using, right? So in this case, I want to see what version of OSGI service component I'm using. So when I do this, you hit Enter, and I just realized that my repo name is in there, which I should not probably have. But anyways, <laughs> uh, you have the component annotation version of 1.3. So basically, you can see what version your Gradle is pulling from. Or in this case, in this case, it's Gradle. You can also use Maven for this. And I provided in the, um, the links at the very end of the presentation a blog that was written by David Nebiger that basically goes into more detail on how to use this and how to um, uh, use it in Maven and Gradle. Okay? So you can find those in the show notes at the bottom. And then if you look in your, in your IDE, in this case, I'm using IntelliJ. You can see all the different versions that it pulls in. This is probably a bad idea because I'm using a bunch of different stuff. But you get the idea, right? You see your dependencies at the bottom of your IDE uh, using the external libraries. And it shows the different versions. So if you want to grep for a specific one, you can. Um, but if you're not grepping for a specific one and you just kind of want to look through, this will show you all the different uh, versions of your dependencies that you're pointing. So all of these are just random packages, except <laughs> the actually, all these are random packages. So this is probably not the best example. I didn't <laughs> take a picture of the life rate dependencies pulling in. But I wanted to get a picture of the external libraries at the very top so you know where to look for it in your Project Explorer uh, for IntelliJ specifically. Uh, for Eclipse, I think Eclipse has an external library section also. You can just pull that down. It'll show you all the different jars uh, that you pulled in from your targeted workspace. Okay? So this is one of my key advice points to use when you're upgrading. Don't manage your versions. It's just easier to use targeted workspace to pull in all your versions um, that way. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Remove copy and paste the code from Liferay. Use plugin, EXT plugins or extend Liferay code properly. And we're going to go through a quick workflow, very high level, on how you would upgrade a, a custom project. So that's coming shortly. Um, Next thing is take your time when upgrading your custom code. So I like to advocate that um, when you're up doing an upgrade, it's already costs a lot. I think it makes sense to take time, refactor old code, legacy code that a lot of times people just comment out and just leave in there. Uh, it builds up over time, and you always want to keep your code base relatively light, right? So that's one way of um, that's one way of upgrading, and that's my advice to you guys. It also lets you understand. Uh, the different parts of your code base. Because maybe you've written it in five years ago, and you have no idea what your portlet does again. Uh, it's a good time to review what you did. Uh, use OSGI implementations when possible. And my advice is upgrading is a gradual process, one step at a time. So don't copy everything and just paste it and then just brute force through it. Go piece by piece, functionality by functionality, functionality by functionality, use case by use case, right? Um, you don't want to spend all your time trying to figure out why your red squiggly line isn't being recognized by your IDE. You want to make sure that you grab the piece of code that does whatever business logic you're doing, take that over, make a new module for whatever the case, upgrade it, and then make sure you refactor the code, look through it, make sure you understand what the heck is going on, and then do that over and over. And then another thing that I wanted uh, to call out is that life rate packages, especially from 6 to 7, 
um, a lot of the package names changed. So that is probably where you're going to spend most of your time upgrading realistically. A lot of the API calls from library 6 going into 7, you're going to have to change uh, like string pool, for, uh, for example. String pool was in kernel. Now it's in Petra. It's like a new package called Petra. So string pool is now deprecated in 7.0 or 7x uh, using the kernel package. So that's uh, one example. So high level view of upgrading a plugin. So this is step by step of what I would do on a project that I've seen or a, a piece of code that I'm getting. Uh, first of all, I would create a new module within my library workspace. So either using Blade CLI directly or using one of your ID uh, wizards, right? Copy and paste over build.gradle or your pom.xml. So your build script back in 6.2, you want to make sure that you grab, typically most of my clients use pom.xml, so they use Maven, right? Copy that list and put it over in build.gradle and s slowly go through and curate that list so that it's using the new life rate dependencies, right? Because like I said, a lot of them change from 6 to 7. And if you're already developing on 7, then you don't really have to do this. If you're already developing on 7, I think my main takeaway is just use targeted workspace. There's some few minor things that change between each minor version of 7, but if you use targeted workspace, that should basically take care of most of the things, especially if you've been using, if you've been using OSGI already. OK? So like I said, walk through each dependencies inside the, the pom.xml into your build.gradle and update them to use target workspace and make sure they reflect the new API so that it pulls down correctly and builds. So copy and paste business logic slash methods one piece at a time. Do it incrementally. Don't do it all at once. You do it all at once, it's just going to be too much. It's going to be drinking out of a fire hydrant, basically. And then you're just going to get frustrated, and then your estimations just go overboard, and you start contemplating why you got into programming. <clears throat> so next thing when you do that is API changes may have called. So for instance, user local service may now take in 23 parameters instead of 21, right? So you want to use the right API calls because some of them got deprecated. Uh, from 6.2 going on to 7. So repeat steps 4 and 5 until your portlet or your customization is done. Basically, you want to make sure all your red squigglies go away. Build in to deploy the module. Test the crap out of it. So usually people will just do it, like they will just upgrade something and then they do a quick smoke test and they say, oh, okay, it's good. They deploy to production and then everything just goes to hell, right? Uh, so you want to make sure that you test it a lot. You want to make sure, if you're re especially if you're refactoring the code, test each individual piece that you're porting over. It's going to take some time, and you just have to kind of be very careful about it and be very uh, diligent. So yeah, refactor code since you're familiar. So since for you to get familiar with it again, because sometimes you have made developed a project five, six years ago, and you need to refactor it. Um, uh, you need to upgrade it, and then you have no idea what you did. So it's a good time to uh, get familiar with the code again just in case business requirements change. Repeat steps seven and eight until you're happy with the new code. Make a PR and merge it yourself, commenting, OK, it looks good. And then you can mark the plugin as done on your issue tracking system, and then you can basically move on to the next one. And then you can comment either one of these two GIFs uh, on your ticket. And if you guys care, you guys can click on them when you receive the slides later down the line. OK. And the last thing is the database. Ironically, it says first item on the list, but it's the last item on my list here. <laughs> um, but basically, the database is something that you want to do first thing when you're doing an upgrade. The database tool will take some time to run, depending on how big your database is. So, Database upgrade tool, handy tool that upgrades your library database. It takes time to upgrade your 250 gig production database, right? You want to make sure you get that started as soon as possible. And then once you have that done, you can import it into your new database and then you can test against it, et cetera, et cetera, right? So back the database up. This should be a given. Uh, don't upgrade the database without taking a backup first. So next thing is, like I mentioned, the database upgrade tool incrementally upgrades your database. So if you're on 6.2 and you're going to 7.2, it's going to upgrade to 7.0, uh, 7.1, 7 and then 7.2. And you'll see it uh, in the logs uh, as you run the database upgrade script. 
And then this is basically where it's located inside of our Liferay workspace. So if you use Blade CLI to create your Liferay workspace, it's going to be located here. So inside Portal Tools DB upgrade client, there's another uh, shell script, or I think there's also a batch script that you can run. You point it against, uh, or you configure it, and you point it against your database, and you run it, and then it runs. Like I said, these are all the helpful links that provided everything that I spoke about and more are in here. Um, so go ahead and click on each one to go over it to see, um, yeah, maybe you have questions on liferay.dev blogs, include versions or not. So that's David, David Nebinger's uh, blog post about targeted framework. It's in there and everything else is here as well. So um, if you have time, also uh, leave a session. Come, I'm going to be here uh, until Thursday. So if you see me, if, if you have questions, come and just tap me. Uh, I'll answer any questions that you guys may or may not have. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And I don't know if we have time for questions. We do not have time for questions. So just find me if you have questions, and I'll go ahead and sit down with you and talk about any specific scenarios that you may or may not have. Okay.